Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back my dear friends, a very good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you, uh, wherever you are um, placed, whether in India or abroad. And as you know, this is the DADM2 course, which is Data Analysis and Decision Making 2 under the NPTEL MOOC series. And uh, this DADM2, as was DADM1, is basically for 12 weeks, which is 60 lectures, each lecture being from half for half an hour. And as you already know, I do repeat in, in the beginning of each class, each week we have five lectures, each being for half an hour. And after each week we have assignments. So we have already completed eight weeks, that is eight assignments have been uh, solved by you. And also we are in a position, um, I'm, we are getting um, uh, queries in the forum and we are answering it accordingly. And today is basically the third lecture uh, in the ninth week, which as you can see from the slide, this is the 43rd lecture in the ninth week. So, we are considering the concept of stochastic dominance. For stochastic dominance was, there was first and second. The first was the case when the CDF value of for the decision A1 uh, is greater than or equal to CDF value of A2. And in the second um, uh, stoch order stochastic dominance was when the expected value of A1 was greater than expected value of A2. And I have drawn this diagram accordingly, if you remember. I will draw it again if required as we proceed. So, we will consider few of the, the different forms of the, the different way of expressions of the MAUT, which is multi attribute utility theory. I will just mention them. They, we would not be solving any problems apart from the very simplistic one. So, for the additive one, the utility function would be where you add up all the, so technically, okay, let me go back uh, a little one step backwards. So, generally you have a bundle of, of uh, a decision which is bundle of criteria, criteria or attributes. Maybe for a car, I am again given the same example, a color, car, boot space, passenger space, safety, style, mileage, price, resale value, per month, maintenance cost, all these things. Some are objective, some are subjective, some can be expressed as equations, some cannot be expressed as equations, they are just characteristics, attributes. Now, for the utilities of the combination of that vector x, x consists of x1 to xn depending on n dimension or it can be from x1 to xk depending on k dimension of the properties. If we can express that whole utility as the sum of the utility functions for each individually, then we have the additive function. The additive for the case if you can add up. Now, if we basically have the concept where you add up the utility function, which is good, but you also give some weightages. So, you will basically have the weighted additive function and these lambdas based on which you, you find out the weights lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3 till lambda n or lambda 1 till lambda k they would be known as the scaling functions for the utility functions. So, the weighted additive functions and these are the scaling functions. So, and this values of, of small u and, and this capital U are the same, they do not make any difference. I am taking a utility function as a functional form only. For the multiplicative or log additive one, you will just consider that you will basically have the combinations such that for the single units, that is u1, u1 I, I am mentioning for ux1, u2 I am mentioning for ux2. For u1, u2, u3 till un, you will multiply with them by the scaling factor, add them up. For So, this is you are taking one at a time combination, when you are taking two at a time combination, if there are n of, the, of them, so it will be nc2, the combinations are u1 with u2, u1 with u, u3 till u1 with un, then you will take u2 with u1, 
u 2 2 with uh, u 2, u 2 with u 3 similarly the last one u 2 with u n and so on and so forth. So, you can multiply them with the concepts of the, the scaling functions or scaling factors which is lambda 1 for the combinations lambda 1, lambda 2 for the combinations of i and j. So, if you have combining u 3 with u 10, it will be lambda 3 and lambda 10. So, you will combine them and similarly as you increase the combinations, you take n c 3. So, you will basically have lambda i, lambda j, lambda k for the combinations of u i, u j, u k. So, here it is. So, this is I am only marking one. So, I use the red color. So, it will be easy for me to write. So, this is basically u i, this is u j, this is u k, the I should be utilizing, let me use the color difference, so it will be easy for me, easy for me to explain also. This is u j, u k, so, the kth one goes with the kth one, the jth one goes with the jth one and the ith one goes with the ith one. So, you will have different combination. If you can put the higher combination, it will be given. I am using the color red only as it is able to differentiate. So, it will be n c 4 combinations. So, I will write, I will you I will write in different colors now. So, these are the combinations n c 4. So, now if I write it, it will be lambda i 1. I am using the suffix i 1, i 2. So, it will be easy for me to differentiate not i j k l. I could do, could have used that, but I am not going to use that. And obviously, the corresponding factor. So, I should leave space so I can write. So, it will be u i 1. When I use the second color, lambda i 2, u i 2, then green lambda i 3, u i 3. So, lambda i 4, u i 4. So, these combinations go along. This combination go along, this combination go along, oh go along means the weightage is scaling factors which I am giving and this combination go along. So, I basically multiply them and have that value. So, here n is the number of utility functions while lambda lambdas are the scaling values which I have for each function. So, here what I am doing I am taking n c 1 combinations, n c 2 combinations, n c 3 combinations till the end last one which is n c n combinations. It is basically trying to find out the joint probability distribution. First case is the marginal case, then you have the uh, joint distribution, bivariate case, trivariate case, so on and so forth. In the decomposable form, the util function u x 1 to u x n is given by a functional form where it is now a function of the utilities taken individually. So, it is u 1, u 2, u 3 till the last one which is taken as u n. So, I have a functional form which basically gives me the output is the decomposable form of the M A U T. For the additive non-transitive decomposition, if we have uh, the functional form where x is greater than y in the sense that it dominates y, x is a bundle, y is a bundle. Of, of decision. Bundle means those is a vector. So, you will basically have for any combination of u i for x and u j for x, you will basically have the functional form always dominating and, and greater than 0. Similarly, you have the multiplicative utility function where you multiply the utilities individually considering that u 1, u 2, u 3, u 4 until the u nth one and you have been able to break them into individual part. In the multilinear case, you will basically have a combination of some of the uk's where you multiply and then multiply those factors by a lambda j corresponding to the fact that you have been able to differentiate the whole utility function into say for example, three components of, 
i has been divided into n n sorry n has been divided into three components which is n1 n2 n3 such that n union of n1 n2 n3 is the universal set n and the intersection i am considering for the time being as n1 intersection n2 or n2 intersection n3 or n1 intersection n3 are on null set then for n1 n2 n3 i have the multiplicative factors as pi j's depending of j which is equal to i1 j is equal to i2 and j is equal to i3 so if i have that then then the utility function which i get is the multilinear utility function other utility functions which i am just mentioning is the quasi additive bilateral hybrid quasi pyramid semi cube interdependent variable and multilinear which i have already considered now we will consider the properties uh, for the multi attribute utility theory so there will be two properties i will come to that the pair of attributes of x and y so x and y are basically the um, bundle of of decision uh, which are vectors so pair of attributes x or y which are elements of capital x then we will say that um, x is preferentially independent of attribute z if the all all the trade offs between x and z is not affected by a given level of of z so if i have a um, decision z and it's not going to affect the ranking system on x and y, y at any stage we will basically say they are preferentially independent based on the fact and x and y are not affected by the decision on level of z while we will say that utilities are independent how x will be independent of of the attribute y when the conditional preferences of the lotteries of x bundle of um, uh, decision x or bundle of decision y where x and y are element of the subs the overall universal set x or y whichever you denote so this x and y are, are a subset of x and y is x small x and small y are subset of either capital x or capital y whichever you, you do not so capital x and capital y are the universal set and the elements are given by the small values and they are obviously vectors so when conditional preferences of the lotteries in on x given y do not um, do not depend on the particular level of y so they would be independent in the sense that you can express them as as multiplicative factors so two attributes are additive independent when you can basically mention so the properties of the of the uh, utility function so of u x1 to xn can be expressed as the sum of u1 to un so that will be a property of additive independence where utility function of any two bundles x1 and x2 uh, can be expressed as the combination of u1 and u2 and it can go to n n different combinations so n or k number of combinations depending on how you denote the vector so if dimensions are n and you are going to combine them n number of times depending on different type of realized values so obviously it will be an additive independent to the factor of k now we will consider background of multi objective optimization theory and here i am mentioning again i am just giving you the picture no solutions would be done because that will be considered in the, in the area of of mc uh, dadm 3 which is decision analysis and, and, and data analysis and decision making 3 where you will consider operation research as the main focus so let us consider a multi objective optimization problem uh, where the form of the optimization is that you have k number of functions and each is based on the fact that for some of, of the x's you basically take the functional form from x, f1 to fk so consider i have uh, the decision to find out the total cost total distance moved and consider the total say for example number of cars uh, lorries used so what is the background of the problem background of the problem i am transporting goods from um, uh, any one of the cities cities consider that they are say for example calcutta patna bhubaneswar delhi kanpur lucknow chennai bengaluru mumbai and all these things i am basically transferring goods from each location to the other so there are um, some distributors they are basically transporting goods to the retailer retailers so 
and I am the main decision maker, I am the owner of the company. So, what is my main task is to find out what is the minimum number of lorries which I utilize to transport goods, what are the goods considered there, I am trying to transport some um, cars say for example or parts of the cars or it can be say for example, I am trying to transport different type of motors, motors being of different ratings. Now, when I do that, I need to find out what is the minimum, minimum number of lorries used because I want to, I want to have to hire. So, if the hiring cost is there, I want to minimize that point one. Point number two is that if I am going to transfer goods from any one of the cities which I mentioned to the other from uh, retailers point, from the distributor to the retailers or from the main um, uh, storehouses of the factory um, to the other retailer point, then basically I have to utilize the lorries in a such a way that I am able to visit maximum of the hubs with the least number of lorries, hubs means the places where I want to deliver and I want to basically travel in such a way that the minimum amount of some of the distance travelled by all the lorries taken together is minimum, that is point number 2 and uh, consider the total cost is also minimum, total cost would may, may depend on say for example, the roads which I follow, the toll tax, the charges per hour, kilometers travelled and all these things. So, these are costs which I want to minimize. On the other hand, maximization can be what is the total profit, what is the total sales, revenues, there can be many things. So, consider for some decisions where consider the decisions are to manufacture some quantum of the motors, the motors count uh, the ratings are say for example, there are 20, 50 horsepower, 100 horsepower, 150 horsepower. So, x is a bundle of decision where x1, x2, x3 are the corresponding numbers which I produce for 50, 100 and 150 horsepower motors. So, for different values of x, these functional forms of f1 to ftk are the total cost of travel, total number of GM lorries which I use, total, total distance traveled, it can be total revenues I generate and so on and so forth. So, so, when I want to optimize, I want to optimize the combination of them in such a way that for the cost I want to minimize them, for the revenues of the profits I want to maximize them. So, the optimization word I am using is in a very general sense. Here n x which I mentioned x1, x2, x3 which is 50, 100 and 150 um, uh, HP motors, they are basically belong to the real line uh, or in the n dimension n, where n is basically the dimension. If there are 10 products, obviously there will be 10 such items. The individual objective functions are given as f1 to fk, I am not mentioning f1x till fkx because as you put the uh, take out the values of x, you get the functional form of f1 to fk in the numeric value. And what you do is that for some bund bundle of, of x's which I have, I get the functional form of fi, i is equal to 1 to k into the real line, I get one value in rupees or dollars or yens whatever it is. So, there may be many instances when the objective function are at least partially in conflict to each other, because if you increase the cost obviously it will mean the increase the, um, uh, it will also have an um, uh, effect on the revenues or let me put it the other way, if I want to increase the revenues I have to transport more goods, more lorries would be utilized, uh, travel has to be more, so obviously revenues will also incur a higher cost. So, that is why we do not have any decision vector x which will optimize in the best possible manner the objective function in all the respect that means it is able to maximize the, the, the positive values and as well as minimize the negative values all at the same time, but I will try to find out the best optimum solution. So, we are interested to solve the optimization problem in order to find out some of uh, uh, area or, or some of the values of x such that we have uh, a multi criteria, multi objective problem based on the fact I want to maximize or minimize or optimize some of the objective function based on an outcome which is x. So, some x's are given which are elements of capital X and I want to choose, choose some of them x such that I am able to optimize. Now, the fact of the optimization is that they are to be optimized individually, but collectively the overall fact would be that the best solutions which I will have may not be same in the quantum front on, on the vector sense. That means, if I have two bundle of, of um, uh, outputs, that means I have x star 1 and x star 2 
and the, and the individual values of x star 1 and x star 2 may not be equal. So, what I will try to show is this. So, I have let me mention. So, let me mention it in the. So, I have x is an element of capital X and this x is in the real line. And now the functional forms are okay. Let me mention the color, change the color so it is easy. So, all negative costs are red. So, consider F1, F3, F4, and the positive R F2. That is why it is green, it is F5, F6 f7. Now, what we will do is that if I find out say for example, some uh, i. So, what you will have is that there would be a positive sense, positive values would accrue from f2, f5, f6 and f7 negative values would accrue from, so I am trying to draw it f1, f3 and f4. So, increasing one would also have a decreasing effect on the other. Uh, if it is true, then obviously, we will try to increase the green one and, and automatically decrease the red one, green and red being the positive and negative one, but it is not that. Increasing one also would have an increasing effect on, on the other and vice versa, because as I said, Increasing the revenue would also mean increasing the cost because you have to sell more of the products, you have to basically utilize the transportation more and so on and so forth. Now, what I want to do is that consider there are some excise and consider these excise are there are x, uh, let me mention them as x1 star. This. Uh, let me, uh, this is x say for example 2 star, this x 1 and 2 have nothing to do with the values of the empty and consider x 3 star. So, they give me the best solution. So, what is best? It may be possible that the bundle of output which I have, so they may be equal. So, what is that I am mentioning? Consider this is x1 star, x2 star, x3 star. When I have these values which I have f2, f5, f6, f7, f2, f5, f6, f7 f2, f5, f6, f7 and the negative values which you have, I am drawing the using f1, f3, f4, f1, f3, f4, f1, f3, f4. The combinations of the output which I get, the bundle net worth, if they are equal, but the individual factor of f1, f2, f3, f4, f5 and f6 and f7 individually they may not be equal. That means, the total benefit which I get for f7 either for x1 star or x2 star or x3 star are definitely different, but collectively if I if all of them are same, I will say that I am using the very simple concept the net worth if I get the same, but then increase or decrease on individual fronts then I will say that they are pari Pareto optimal such that I am equally disposed by taking the decision x1 star or x2 star or x3 star because individually I get the net worth. I am uh, combined I get the net worth individually may be different that is a different question. So, now here is the diagram and, uh, and it is only possible for me to draw in the two dimensional case. I will try to draw it in the three dimensional case. Let me see how I am able to do that. So, consider the objectives you mentioned, one is along the uh, x axis objective 2 and along, uh, objective 1 is along the y axis. 
and if you see there are in this overall space of optimization there are four colors I have utilized. So, colors if you can see A B is red in color, C D is green in color please note it down it will be for your own good you will understand. So, if you draw the diagram and if you are seeing this diagram again I am mentioning mark A B as red then the area or the line C D as green because the color scheme will have important fact while the line E F is blue and the line G H is violet. So, again I am mentioning A B is red, C D is green, E F is blue and G H is violet while the other portions of the line for this whole area B C is black. So, it would not have any meaning because it would not be possible for to us to differentiate. So, black color I am using for the fact that I am not going to draw any conclusions from here. B C is black again I am mentioning D E is black, F G is black and H A is black. So, if you have drawn this now we will proceed based on which I will mention the concept. So, let us pay more, more attention on the colored line which is A B red, C D green, E F blue and G H as violet. So, in this hypothetical example which you have drawn in a two dimension it can be extended to the three dimensional also as I mentioned. There are two objectives it will illustrate the Pareto optimality plots for four different combinations of the objective functions where the objective functions are O B O 1 and O 2 which is objective function 1 and objective function 2. The boundary areas depict the hypothetical feasible set and the boundary is considered to be the optimal set of feasible points depending on whether it is a maximization or a minimization problem based on the fact that you are considering the objective function 1 or 2. So, the color schemes would now become important. Point 1 the red line which you considered which was I will for the first time I will switch between this uh, graph. So, let me make it just next to each other. So, this is the grind. So, here it is the red one. So, A B if I consider is for the case when we consider minimization objective 1 along with the minimization objective 2 let us see. So, I am trying to minimize both of them. So, considering this I am I am I would have this area. If I similarly consider the green light blue or the blue and the violet one these are the instances which are like this maximization of objective 1 with minimization of object 2, 2 which is for the green one. For the light blue one it is it is maximization of objective 1 and minimum maximization of objective 2 and finally, violet one will be minimization of objective 1 and maximization of objective 2. So, violet 1 or minimization of objective 1 and maximization of objective 2. So, for uh, the light blue it is of maximization of both from green 1 it is basically minimization of of objective 2 and maximization of objective 1 while the red one is minimization of both. So, in the third three dimension how it looks I will consider that in the subsequent two class. So, this would be more of, of understanding the concept of multi objective problem and in the last two class for the ninth week I will try to wrap it up with some interesting examples as required to make the things much easier for you to understand from the very simplistic point of view. Obviously, we will solve such problems in TADM 3 which I had already mentioned. With this I will end this class and have a nice day thank you very much.